good day. Today is March 6, 2024. My name is Dr. Deborah Van in Hokoboken, California, and I will be your moderator for this class. Welcome to the Archetype Pattern Workshop, Scripture Study Class. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity until this present day. This school was established as the result of a divine vision and, and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year of 1931. Classes are held in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The class in Fairmont, West Virginia, was started in November 2020. At this time, I would like to introduce to you our facilitator of this class, Dr. Dennis Pratt, and our secretary, Dr. Patty Deslin. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters in or letters in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. During the time he walked the earth plane, neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. The Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in His pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive sh shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word of son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in the divine vision and understood in divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation, 
and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also at this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The primary constitutional objectives and aims of this class is as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahweh with Messiah, without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is to speak the truth. This week we will continue classes on the Archetype Pattern Workshop, Fairmont, West Virginia platform to support the absence of the Honest Hearted Truth Seekers Zoom classes. At this time, I'd like to thank everyone this morning for their participation. And also, at this time, I'd like to have um, our class dedicated in prayer this morning by Dr. Teresa Baker. We will also have our scripture reading, which will be 2 Timothy, the third chapter, read by Dr. Joyce Van Hook. We will have a musical selection from Dr. Jacqueline McCain. And at this time, I'd like to thank everyone again. And can may we have our prayer now? Good morning, brethren. Let us all humble in our hearts and minds for a moment of prayer and give reverence unto Yahweh, our Elohim, through his son, Yahshua the Messiah. Father, we thank you for allowing us to assemble once again in your name to show us your love, your beauty, your justice, your wisdom, intelligence, and knowledge, foundation, power, and strength, formulating in us during these last few days that we have here left on this earth, Father, before we are joined in one with you. 
Father, I ask as the teaching comes forth that you be with us and teach us and keep our hearts still and not think about the woes of the world. We're just here with you, Father. Among two or three witnesses, you said you would be in the midst. So we are in the midst of you. All these blessings we thank you for and are grateful for in the name of your son and our savior, Yahshua the Messiah. May the class say, hallelujah. 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 Good morning, brethren. Acts 17 and 28 states, for in him we live and move and have our being. I want us to sing today about how great Yahweh is. Oh, Yamael, when I in awesome wonder consider all the world thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thou power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior, Yah. Shua, how great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior, Shua, how great Thou art, how great thou art. When the, through the woods and the forest glades, I wonder and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees when i look down from a lofty mountain grinder and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze and when i think that Yah, his son not sparing, sent him to die. I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burdens gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away our sins, then the sings my soul, my Savior, Yahshua, how great thou art, how great thou art, then the sings my soul, my Savior, Yah, how great thou art, how great thou art. Praise Yahshua. Hallelujah. 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 That was beautiful. Yes. Good morning, brethren. I will be reading 2 Timothy, the third chapter, 
from the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities in various manuscripts, revised by the late A.B. Trainer of the Scripture Research Association in College Park, Maryland. 2 Timothy, 3rd chapter. This know also, that in the last days perilous time shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of Yahweh, having a form of the worship of Yahweh, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For if this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with various lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Lyconium, at Lystra. Pardon me, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all Yahweh delivered me, yea, and all that will live in fear of Yahweh shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Yahshua the Messiah. All the scripture that is given by inspiration of Yahweh is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of Yahweh may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. I've read to you Second Timothy, the third chapter. Hallelujah. Thank you. And good and I'd like to also announce that our scripture readers for the week are Dr. Joyce Van Hook and Dr. Lucy Altman. I'd like to turn this class over now to Dr. Dennis Pratt, our facilitator. Good day, Dr. Pratt. Good day, family. This is the day Yahweh has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm thankful to Yahshua Messiah so that he has assembled us today to increase our knowledge and understanding of his purpose, pattern, and plan that is operating to this very day in our very souls and that he's making us to hear him, he's making us to see him, and he's making us at peace with all things that he has purposed. With that, we have 2 Timothy, third chapter that we have just read. I want to thank the, the participants, the beautiful song that was sung in, in, in calming our hearts, and the prayer that calls to clear our mind so we can give our full attention to the teacher that's here among us, teaching us his truth and, and just preparing us for the translation of his coming to the universe revelation that he has purposed to take place at the end of this age. So with those words, I yield the floor to any comments. I saw a hand raised earlier by Dr. Jean Burris. If she has a comment she cares to make for a question, or anyone that's attending at this time, uh, this is the time to uh, express 
uh, things that Yahshua has laid on your heart regarding the scripture or any concerns you have? Uh, just let me say, and thank you, uh, Dr. Preck. Oh, I have raised my hand because uh, Jack, Jackie's voice kept going in and out, and I wasn't sure if it was uh, from your end or from my end, but finally my tab is just went out completely, so I know it was from me, and you all excuse the interruption. Thank you very much. Problem. Appreciate your attendance here. Yeah, it was a smooth song. <laughs> yes, and she does such a beautiful job. And yes, I hate that Indeed I so. didn't hear it all. Praises I, to you. <laughs> yeah, I didn't hear all the scripture either, but I'm back. Thank you. Okay, and it will be uploaded within 24 to 40 hours on broadcast to YouTube and Facebook. So. That's also another opportunity to review the report that we're looking at today. But thank you for your comments, Dr. Burris. Anyone else care to share on 2 Timothy, third chapter? I know before we started, someone mentioned their understanding of the of this chapter. Would they care to expound? Uh, good morning, brethren. Uh, this particular chapter, uh, Every line of it speaks to the situation of what is going on in the world today. Uh, yeah. if, you're, if you're familiar with the entertainment world, politics, uh, every phase, those uh, principalities and powers, as we should say, mega churches, all of the stuff that we see today, uh, in the news, and at one time, uh, we were not aware that this has always been. This situation has never not been. And the reason I say that is because Yahweh declared the end from the beginning. And when you go back and you read the way the world was uh, in the book of Genesis at the time of Noah, you'll understand that the same thing was going on then. Uh, we have now uh, the fact that we now have access to the internet and computers. We are actually, uh, the world is really back to one, plea, one piece. Because at one time, if you will remember back in the time of Noah, it says at one time the world was of one language in one piece. Well, this is where the world is now. And it has never not been that way. It is just because of communication that we are aware of that. Some of the virtues that we grew up with, like your word being your bond or um, dealing with people, you know, above board uh, and all of that, all of that has now gone out the window. You're now not uh, required to keep your word, you know, uh, you can just lie about anything you like, and you can tell the world, yes, I lied about it. So, uh, and you have no, there's no allegiance uh, to anything. And all of this, we are looking at every day when you turn on the news. Uh, the You truly know, if you know anything at all, you will know that the only good news is the gospel. Everything else is just the absolute pits. And if it doesn't bleed, it doesn't lead. People love catastrophe. They love war. They love rumors of war. They love uh, any any uh, trick uh, that, that uh, gets over on someone. And the fact that uh, our identity, you know, uh, it started out with the with, with what you had, what you, you call um, identity theft, where people were just stealing other people's names on paper. And now you have what you call an identity crisis because people don't know who they are. They don't know what they are. They don't know who they want to be. And at one time, you couldn't use pronouns to uh, deal with people. But now in certain places, 
the law requires that you you deal with pronouns, them and they and those. And at one time, in certainly in our culture, uh, you didn't say things like those people. That was just out. Those were fighting words. So I'm just looking at the fact that I've been around a few years and I've seen this come to pass. And I'm absolutely amazed that at every phase, we are, we, uh, please and thank you is not even in our vocabulary in many, in many ways. Children are rebelling against their parents every day, but he said that back in uh, Isaiah. So this is why I said that the situation that we're looking at today, we're more aware of because of the line of communication because we're able to turn a knob and look anywhere in the world that we wish to look at. And we didn't always have that. But now, all you have, and and it doesn't matter what language it's in. So the one thing that I'm just most grateful for is that our Heavenly Father, in Psalm 150 and 6, he said, let. And when he says let, it's going to happen. He said, let everything that have breath praise Yahweh. And so it doesn't matter where you are, who you are, what language you speak. If you're walking upright and breathing, you're praising Yahweh. Hallelujah. 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 I appreciate the comment of the previous speaker, she said something that came to mind on, on how real these scriptures are and current to this day. Um, that's, you know, I wanna at least touch base on what I, cause I watch what they call modern marvels. It's a broadcast and actually history is from the history channel. And I was watching something regarding the Panama Canal and the president then um, spoke, you know, made a quote, but he made this quote not during his presidency when he was asked, did he take over an area that's not theirs, which is in the, in the, in the South America area, Panama itself, you know, but then after his presidency, I believe in 1911, he blatantly said, yes, I took it over, you know, and, uh, and has been catching uh, some hell behind that since. And, and they documented that, you know, and again, it just brings me back to how the Apostle Paul here during um, this present age, because this is after he's filled with the Holy Spirit. So we're in this present age still where these events are taking place. But we know when we look at, I think it's Isaiah um, 9 and 6, where Yahshua keeps us mindful, because it's always, go, always good to go back to the Law and Prophets to know anything about our Father, that the government rests on his shoulders. And as the prayer said, it's not, you know, we wear this world loosely. We clear the clutter or the trappings of this world from our mind when Yahshua assembles us, which is good, to confirm with us, you know, his purpose. So let's get Isaiah 9 and 6. And then the scripture that tells us to begin uh, to go back to the law and to the prophets. I believe that's in Luke 24, where the Messiah is telling them to, uh, or is it in John 5, where he says to begin to, to, to go back to the law and to the prophets. They testify not. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, that's that. in John. Okay. I said nine I see. and six. For unto us a child is born. Unto Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. Yes. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor of the Mighty El, of the Father of Eternity, the Prince of Peace. Yes. So here in Isaiah, who is a prophet, and, we're, and let's read um, to the law and to the prophets first before I, I continue. Isaiah 8 and 20. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Okay, so we know the law and the prophets. The law is the first five books. 
that Moses is inspired to write. We're going to talk about inspiration of Yahweh and how he, in the first five books, we, we see that as the law being given, known as the Mosaic law to some. That's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And then the testimonies which are coming from the prophets who Yahweh as the word, you know, shares with them what to write. And here with Isaiah, who is a prophet, you know, is prophesying of the Messiah's birth. A child is born, unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. That son is Yahweh Elohim in that shape and form that's given to us. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. So we know that there's no mistake in his purpose. There's nothing out of control. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor of the Mighty El. So we know El is short for Elohim, which is the word or son, as it was stated in the moderation. And of the Father of Eternity. So we know it's Yahweh himself who is the Father of all creation. So we see that he is manifesting himself in his creation, carrying out his purpose. So we see when we look at 2 Timothy and the third chapter, which, which is going to be, again, mentioned, Dr. Kenley, our founder, but if it wasn't for him receiving a divine vision revelation, we would have nothing to say about this gospel, about understanding the purpose of our father or knowing anything of a pattern <clears throat> that proves his purpose and how he's operating in his creation. And that it's by divine inspiration, I believe it's, let's go to 2 Timothy 3 and 10 first, and then let's get, um, uh, I think it's 16. Yes. So let's read 2 Timothy 3 and 10, and then 2 Timothy 3 and 16. 2 Timothy 3 and 10. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, patience. 16. All the scripture that is given by inspiration of Yahweh is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That's right. And, and again, we have to understand that the scripture, when he speaks of this during the time that he is walking this earth plane, as the Apostle Paul, the scripture he's referring to, as it's always been said, and, and, and we know in class by taking a time to investigate it, it's not the New Testament. It's, it's not the New Testament when we, when we continue coming to class and see when we get Jeremiah 31 and 31. Um, let's get that to see that the New Testament is not written on paper, on ink, with ink and paper. It's written in our hearts in this present age, but we'll see that Paul is referring to the scripture that was written, and we see it in the Law and the Prophets, which is the Old Testament or the Old Covenant. So it's by the inspiration of Yahweh who introduced himself to Moses in that Old Covenant, as we, as we read in Exodus 3 and 15, that is Yahweh, the name he gave to Moses to declare to Pharaoh that delivers them out of bondage. It's that same name that delivers us out of bondage today. And that his doctrine, which is his gospel of the good news of how he's the one that fulfills all scripture. And he's the one that makes a way through Pentecost to abide in us and save us. So let's read that in Jeremiah 31, 31. Did you still want Luke? Um. Was that, I think, we, I think we read it in John already, Dr. Altman. I think we No, did. we didn't. We didn't? All right, no. Let's read it then I thought we did. Luke 24, 27, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. That's fine. We did read it in John, though, where we said to be, um, it was something we read in John. You, I don't know. If, you recall, but we Isaiah. About, was it Isaiah? Okay, yeah, that's what I said yeah. yeah, okay, so yeah. that's so we know to always begin with Moses, which is the point. It, it's important to always remember anything that we want to know, or Yash was giving us something to meditate on regarding himself. 
to always begin with Moses. And that means to go back into the Old Testament. You know, we have now the, the technology to, to do a, a Google search and search the topic and look for it in the Old Testament, in the Law and in the Prophets, you know, to begin with and better understanding the purpose of Yahweh. So what do I have holding? Jeremiah, did we read that? 31, 31. Jeremiah 31, 31. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith Yahweh. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith Yahweh, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their Elohim and they shall be my people. Okay, so if you read that last section for me, Dr. Altman, again a little slowly, we're looking at this chart that we know points to the Old Testament being fulfilled or carnal ordinances that was given only to the children of Israel and not to the Gentile nation, such as circumcision, which we know is given to Abraham as a covenant. And we see that through these physical sacrifices given under the Mosaic law, the Passover instituted in Egypt, these things were given to the children of Israel, not to Gentile nations. And that only he was able to fulfill it because it was given as, a, a, as an example to show that they could not they could not serve or they could not abide by this law. We'll break one law and all the laws are broken. And so we see this illustration showing that the Messiah came in under the law to fulfill the law and nail it to his cross. And here he brings in as a result of fulfilling it, he brings in a new covenant, a new testament, where he writes in our hearts and minds the spiritual reality that is given in scripture. Understand that he is truly the bread of life. He's truly the waters of regeneration. He's truly the light that lights us up. And he's truly the one that governs us by the universal spirit law that we'll see in the pattern that we'll speak of soon. So I have a scripture holding. Jeremiah 31, 33. Yes. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith Yahweh, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their Elohim and they shall be my people. Yes, thank you. So we see this being fulfilled. And again, it, it draws us out from the false teachings that was spoken in Second Timothy chapter 3. How uh, we have those who are seducers, and again, these are these are people that is possessed, and and a lot of times I didn't know I, that I didn't know that Lord and God was titles. So we all came in, you know, with with an ignorance of not knowing who our Savior and who the Creator is, but with some kind of concept or man's tradition thinking I can serve him by water baptism, joining a church, paying tithes, listening to, to, to ministries on TV without end, things of that nature, which does not serve him in spirit and in truth. And it is he, Yahshua himself, that calls us by name. And, and as he did with Moses, you know, the, the blessing is he causes us to turn aside from those things and, and focus on him. Also, I wanted to focus also on 2 Timothy 3 and 16, where all scripture is given by inspiration and inspiration of Yahweh. So it's understanding that it's a doctrine, if that's profitable, it's a way of life that's spoken of early in scripture. Let's get, um, let's go to the law to see how he speaks to us. And he's spoken to the prophets in 2 Samuel. Let's get uh, 23 and 2. That's in the prophets and um, in the law. Let's get uh, Deuteronomy 4 and 36. Mm 
That was Second Samuel. Who was that, Doc? Uh, Second Samuel, I think, 23 and 2. 23 and 2. Yeah. Let's see. Second Samuel 23 and 2 says, The Spirit of Yahweh spake by me. You said this or you said the Spirit? Right. It it says it. I'm sorry. It says the spirit of Yahweh mm -hmm. spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. And this is the prophet Samuel. For those who are not familiar with Samuel, Samuel is made a prophet by purpose, and he's recording here uh, the words of David, King David, that was also purpose, you know, and and had a government that that he was responsible for in Jerusalem and conquering Jebus, which is not known as Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So we see here that it says, the spirit of Yahweh spake by me and his word was in my tongue. Mm -hmm. So it is the same manifestation. This was under the post-Diluvian age. I'll show that um, so we can see the ages and dispensation chart to get a better understanding of the uh, event. So we're talking about a, an ages and dispensation chart, which involves seven ages and seven dispensations. And for the focus point here is that David, again, where our government is set up through the Davidic covenant, let's get 1 Kings 7, 14, is that David, you know, is being recorded through the prophet Samuel as, as having the word of Yahweh speaking through his tongue. So we have holding um, Deuteronomy 4 and 36. Deuteronomy 4, 36. Out of heaven he made thee to hear his voice, that he might instruct thee. And upon earth he showed thee his great fire, and thou heardest his words out of the midst of the fire. So I'm going to have you read that again slowly, Dr. Ullman, because this illustration shows a heavenly line when we see that that we and we see here because we know the writer is Moses it's in Deuteronomy so let's read that again and see how out of heaven Elohim speaks to him and reveals himself read Deuteronomy 4 36 out of heaven he made thee to hear his voice that he might instruct thee and upon earth he showed thee his great fire and thou heardest his words out of the midst of the fire. Thank you. So we know this same fire or this same cloud, when we see the pattern that's given to us and spoken in the moderation as the most holy place, holy place and forth run about. In the most holy place, this correlates to our head region, which is the most holy place according to man by the pattern. And it's here that he's speaking to us and instructing us. And that's a gift, because I know before coming into class, the instructions and, and the concepts and the things taught in schools, you know, I always find myself empty. I find myself feeling empty. I'm feeling unsatisfied, not very happy, uh, seeking joy in, in things such as liquor and, 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 and other kinds of, you know, uh, material things. But spiritually, he speaks to us in this new covenant you know, in our hearts and in our minds. Let's get um how he let's get um Nehemiah nine and twenty because that instruction gives us life or a way or a manner of living, a manner of interacting, a manner of seeing things. Hmm. Nehemiah nine and twenty. Thou gave us also thy good spirit to instruct them. And withheldeth not thy manna from their mouth, mm -hmm. and gavest them water for their thirst. And so we know that in the wilderness of Sinai, after the children of Israel were delivered out of Egypt into the wilderness of Sinai, that there was a minister of Moses known in the scripture to the world as Joshua, the son of Nun. But after being here in class, you'll see and remember and prove that there's no letter J to this very day, nor any character that would produce the sound 
that is made by the letter J. So it could not have been Joshua, but it was actually Joshua who's Moses minister. So read that scripture again, please. Nine and 20. Thou gave us also thy good spirit to instruct them and withheld us not thy manna from their mouth and gave it them water for their thirst. And we know from yesterday's class that we looked at, I, I believe, no, it was last week's class when we looked at the relation with Moses and Israel, how manna was given and the Sabbath instituted where they were to, to gather on the sixth day a double portion. And, and we know that this correlates to where we are today, that that bread of life is knowing, it's, it's the word of Elohim that we see and know and hear and speak through our tongue, you know, when we share and witness to others how he is our salvation, how truly he is our salvation, and that nothing is happening by happenstance. Um, let's see it in the fulfillment um, where if, if, if we or those who, are, who don't, who reject, let's go to Mark 12 and 24, um, who are not taking the time to clear their mind taking the time to commune with Yahweh personally and individually to receive of him. Let's, let's see what Mark has to say about that. And let's get um, what happens when we do in Psalms 19 and 7, where it converts our soul. Mark 12 and 24. Mm -hmm. And Yahshua answering said unto them, Ye do not, therefore, do ye not... Therefore, err, because you know not the scriptures, neither the power of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And Psalms 19, 7 through 11. Psalms 19 and 7. The law of Yahweh is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of Yahweh is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of Yahweh are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of Yahweh is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of Yahweh is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of Yahweh are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and a honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Praise Joshua. And we see that the instructions manifest from our Father's nine divine principal attributes, which is intelligence, wisdom, knowledge, beauty, love, justice, foundation, power, and strength, that he is. He manifested into a physical body in shape and form with our flesh and blood, which is manifesting in us in our hearts and minds today through the Holy Spirit. Through Pentecost, through his death, burial, and resurrection, he resurrects us and those who has believed in him uh, from Adam all the way to uh, through John, um, you'll see a resurrection of souls that's in the faith that resurrect unto a greater life than what they had before in the knowledge and understanding of our Savior, who is a quickening spirit. And this Pentecost is still going on now. It happened and opened up the present kingdom age. Let me find the chart here. Here is, you see the cross on the line between the third age and the fourth age. And you have here the death, burial, and resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah that put an end, as we see this word end on there, puts an end to these carnal ordinances that was given in the previous ages and ushers in Pentecost, the Holy Spirit, through faith. Let's get Ephesians 2 and 18. And we know that he is assembling us as a body unto himself. And let's get Colossians 1 and 24. Ephesians 2 and 18. For thou, for through him, we both have access 
by one spirit unto the Father. Mm-hmm. And that was Colossians 1 and 24. Okay, one moment, please. Colossians 1 and 24. Oh dear. Somehow, I've all, okay. Colossians 1 and 24 says, Who now rejoice in my suffering for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of the Messiah in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the assembly. Yes. Wherefore, I am made a minister according to the stewardship which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of Yahweh. That's right. So again, we understand his purpose is to fulfill and reconcile us unto himself as his body that he presents to us faultless before the presence of our Father's glory. I wanted to also just bring up uh, Matthew to show again how Yahweh is doing all things. Matthew 21 and 42, and then I'll yield the floor. Okay. Matthew. Let's see, Matthew 21 and 44. Let's go back here. 21 and 44 says, uh, And whosoever shall call, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, and who shall, whosoever shall fall on the stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will wrong. grind him to powder. Yeah, I think that's the wrong one. Um, When this is that Yahweh is doing all things. Let me see. Someone knows it. Should be. Let's get Ephesians 4 and 6. Ephesians 4 and 6 says. 1. Okay, let's see. We I need to go back. I need to go up. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Elohim, one faith, one baptism. One is Yahweh and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. That's right. And we'll finish up with Romans 8 and 29. 8 and 29 moments. Which is because one he's the one that's working all things out. He's the one that's carrying it out. Romans 8 and 29 says. Oh, 8 and oh, 28. I'm sorry. 8 and 28. 8 and 28. For we know that all things work together for good. To them that love Yahweh, to them who are the called according to his purpose, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Praise Yahshua. Thank you. So with that, I hope something was said to edify the body. On on better being better um, acquainted with Second Timothy, the third chapter. We're also going to go into it further in our um, second half of the class. I yield the floor to anyone else that cares to comment or ask any questions. I have a comment. Second mm-hmm. Timothy, the third chapter. <clears throat> okay. I want to get the apostasy. I took the time and uh, looked up apostasy because the third chapter starts out that this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. And as you heard the previous speaker say, we do understand that we're in the last days when we go over in Habakkuk. Uh, Habakkuk tells us to write the vision and make it plain upon tables that in the end, the vision will speak 
And we do understand that uh, we are here by divine vision and divine revelation that was given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year of 1931. And through this divine vision and revelation that was given to Dr. Kinley, we are now in the state that we're in being placed in the kingdom of Yahshua by the preaching of the gospel. So see, we understand now it's no longer a physical thing, but it's a spiritual thing. And in John 4 and 24, we understand that we have to worship him now in spirit and truth. Because prior to us coming into this class, we did not have any truth. We had uh, our concepts, our thoughts, and our opinions of who God was or how he existed, but we knew nothing about him. But through this divine vision and this divine revelation, we have now been translated into a kingdom that is not of this earth. And I can't, it's a scripture in the Bible that says that he said, my kingdom is not of this world. And we know by being in this class that this, what we are learning is not of this world. It is not of man. It is not of man's wisdom. This is direct from the creator himself. So he said that in this, this know also. See, he said some other things before because what he's talking about is the apostasy that's taking place. Now, when we're going to, and, and I didn't get a chance to go back and pick up all the apostasies back in the law and the prophecy because they had, uh, uh, during the judges, they, 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 uh, <laughs> They just rebelled against Yahweh. So the definition of apostasy is a rebellion against, uh, I'm sorry, this is from the uh, uh, Wikipedia dictionary. Apostasy is the formal disaffiliation from an abandonment of or renunciation. I can't say that word, but renouncing. Renunciation. Of a Renunciation, okay. Re renunciation. Renunciation, thank you, of a religion by a person. It can also be defined within the border content of embracing an opinion that is contrary to one's previous religious belief. Now, we understand now, uh, since we've been in this school, how there has been a division that took place. But Yahweh told us that in this book, in this scripture right there, that in the last days, perilous times going to come. You're going to have some that's going to depart from the faith. See, we know that, uh, let's get, uh, uh, oh, Father, uh, the things that we teach, Second Peter 2 and 20, what I'm trying to get to is showing you how when we came in here, we had we came in here like the vessels was talking, how we got a beginning point. Yahweh showed, brought us in here because we didn't have no truth in us. So we had to come and learn how to worship our creating spirit and truth. So when we came in here, we had to come in and we was taught that, you know, we go to Luke 20. If we know we have basic scripture preparations to set it up so you can get an understanding because we was taught according to this divine vision that we did not know how to read this Bible. And it was a book that was sealed. And it's a scripture that says that it was sealed. But see, by this divine vision that was given to Dr. Kenley, now this the seals are broken and are, are loose so we can understand it. So now we understand that this whole book is a vision and it's all talking about our savior. See, that's what we're coming out of. See, we're coming out of the concept so we had something to do with it and coming into the realization that this whole Bible is talking about our savior, Yahshua, and how he's performing our salvation. And so that's why we come and sit down and we learn these things. So, um, Second, you can get Second Peter 2 and 20 because see, we don't want to get back entangled. That's the apostasy. It's turning away. Now, and, and, and I'm not saying this to be negative, but Yahweh set it up this way. Y'all, it's, it's just, it ain't my doing. Yahweh set it up. You got people, and I know I got brethren that I love that have gone to a, a, a part of the, uh, uh, the institute 
what we used to call the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research, where they are teaching a separate doctrine. They are teaching the doctrine of a man, but this is the manifestation of the prophecy that Yahweh is saying through Timothy that in the last days, these perilous times shall come. So um, let me get the definition of perilous. We got the definition of apostasy and we can see the manifestation of the apostasy taking place because Yahshua, we're teaching to keep your finger in the book, to go to the law and to the prophets, to prove a point. And I'm getting ready to do that. Uh, I want to get Deuteronomy 13 and 6 because Yahweh set up with the children of Israel, how they have a law to follow. And he told them in Deuteronomy, if they do all these things, it would be their righteousness. But see, Yahweh knew that they weren't going to be able to do it because he declared the end from the beginning. So what he did was he gave them a way out by giving them the tabernacle pattern and giving them a, a way to where it's when they do break the law that they would have to take something to the high priest and he would pray over it and their sins would be forgiven. And we understand all that and we've gone through that. We learned that coming into class about the day of atonement, how once a year the high priest go in for the cleansing of the sanctuary. See, see, we're waiting for that universal day of revelation right now, but not trying to get off the subject because I can't go down the rabbit hole real quick. But um what we what we want to go and pick up and show back there, Yahweh told them if he if all they had to do was just be obedient and Yahweh would do it, but they rebelled against Yahweh. And you know, we can get some of the instances where they Yahweh gave them kings and judges and they rebelled against them. They killed all of them, you know. But uh uh that was because they didn't have anything in them. But let me slow down and 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 gather my thoughts and let you read something. Did you still want Second uh, Peter 2 and 20? Yeah, read that. Uh-huh. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Redeemer and Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, they mm -hmm. are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Right. right. So we, you know, the things that we have learned, we want to, uh, that's in, in that in the scripture, le scripture lesson, but continue thou in the things which thou has learned and has been assured of. See, and that's why coming into this school under the divine vision and revelation and sticking to the things that the father has given us. And you know something, the only way we're being able to stick to that is because Yahshua is guiding and leading us. Because remember over in Matthew, he told us no man can come to the father unless they come through me. And see, that's what we have to stick with, with what thus say Yahweh. So now here it is in Acts, did I call Acts yet? Over in Acts, my no. head is in already. <laughs> no, my head is Deuteronomy. In Acts yeah. the 20, yeah, I'm going to get Deuteronomy. In Acts the 21st chapter, chapter see, you got to remember when after Yahshua I went through his death, bearing resurrection and outpoured the Holy Spirit, they were used to keeping a law of Moses, you know, and so Saul is, is preaching now the resurrection of Yahshua inside. He's not preaching the law of Moses. So you got some scribes and Pharisees and some people that are a little tick with Saul and want to kill him because he's telling them, oh, it's no more by the law. You know, we worship him in spirit and truth, just like the religious world today. They feel like they got to go do something. They got to dunk somebody in water. They got to eat something, you know. But what we come to find out that, that we come down here to learn about Yahshua in spirit and truth. We're, we're reading words, but those words are interpreted in us with a knowledge and an understanding where we can testify that what he's saying in this book is real. Uh, I'm going down the rabbit hole again. Read, Lucy, please. Talk about me. Mm -hmm. You wanted Acts 21 and? Oh, 18. I'm sorry. Acts 21 and 18. And the day following, Saul went in with us unto James, and all the elders were present. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things Yahweh had wrought among the nations by his ministry. Right. Because y'all remember, uh, uh, I'm going to cut it short because I don't want to take up all the time, but y'all remember how Saul was 
persecuting the uh, the 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 the, uh, the Israel. He was persecuting them because uh, uh, shoot, fire. My head just went just totally blank. Huh. He was persecuting the sons. the sons. Yep, for preaching the gospel of Yahshua, and then Yahshua had to knock him down and show him where. Oh no, 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 no! You wrong. You know we did that in the law and the prophets, but I came in. I went through my death, my burial, and my resurrection, and I outpoured my Holy Spirit. Now is no more by law physical, but it's by spirit. So now Saul is seeing the spiritual of it, and he's going along preaching the resurrection of Yahshua. Well, they don't like that, you know, because they still, you know, was under the law. So they're getting ready to beat up on Saul over in the 21st chapter. And if you, you know, you can go back and read, uh, uh, when you go back and read the Acts of the Apostles, you know, uh, I like it when uh, Psalms, uh, is it 103 and 7? He made known his ways unto Moses and his acts unto the children of Israel. So here it is. Yahweh has made his ways known unto Dr. Kinley. And he's showing us the acts of the apostles, just like he showed us the acts of the children of Israel. And he told us in 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, let that, the, you know, these things, let them be an example unto you that you don't lust after these things. Because see, we can read over in Galatians and see what Satan's M.O. is, see, and we can understand. And we don't want to go to that end. We want to stay focused on Yahshua because, see, uh, in the apostasy, you got the envies and the strifes and the murders and the heresies. If y'all see my uh, my little, uh, uh, what you call, icon that I have, I got the, uh, the brain chart, how Yahshua is walking down through us, chipping away all of that. So see, he's chipping it and taking that away. So we don't want to go back or get back entangled with thinking that we got something to do with it. What we got to do is put our trust like Israel should have did, put their trust in Yahshua. And that's hard for a human being to do because we ain't never had to, we always depended on ourselves, <laughs> you know? And so Yahweh had to teach us <laughs> how to depend on him. And that's why we come down to this class to learn how to depend on Yahshua. Okay, so now let's get um you read so I'm just reading Acts because you understand what the story is all about. I just gave a synopsis of what the story is all about. Uh and I'm gonna get over and do the run of me because I did mention how it had to start from the beginning. And then we're gonna get Second Chronicles 15. Cause see the apostasy just always have been. You know, Yahweh did it in every age and every dispensation, you know. And and if I get a chance the opportunity, maybe I can do a little bit more digging and get some better witnesses, you know. But the apostasy has always been. So we're gonna get are you over in Deuteronomy now? Deuteronomy 13 and 6. Mm, is, that, is that what you wanted, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Deuteronomy. You also requested a definition for perilous. Yes, let's get that. Because see, I'm just talking and my head is already knowing this. And I and I do apologize because see, you know, that's why I, we have a tendency. We already know something. So we think everybody else is where we are. And I do humbly apologize. Thank you so much for bring, reeling me in. Thank you. I definition. Don't a, I don't oh, know I thought you <laughs> I think okay. uh, I, I don't know who has that definition for perilous. Okay. That'll give me a chance to breathe. She just re requested it. Okay. And and I also want to get Exodus 2320 and uh we're going to get Deuteronomy 13, 6 through 11, and 2 Chronicles 15 and 13. Uh, but right now, we're going to get the definition of perilous, because I'm talking about our scripture lesson, 2 Timothy, the third chapter. And then we'll go on down so I can uh, uh, finish up on what I'm saying. Perilous. Peril. Silence. It's on the screen. Perilous. Um, full of danger or risk. Okay. I Exposed feel like to uh, imminent risk of disaster or ruin. Right. A disaster. To lose your soul, is that a disaster? 
Uh yes. Say so. So that's why we're here in this school to learn about salvation of the soul. And the only salvation we got is through Yahshua. See, ain't through nobody else, not through me, not through the words I'm speaking. I'm telling you, the things that I'm saying is because this is what I've learned since I've been in this school and how he's shown me how going in this book is testifying of him. And it's just a beautiful love story that he just, you know, and, and it, with, ooh, he is so long suffering, but I don't want to get off into a tangent. Let's go. Uh, so we understand that perilous means danger. It's like warning, warning, you know, hey, come to class, learn all you can. He said, you know, they, we've been saying that since 1980. I've been in school since 1980. I got my license in 86, so it was 83 or whenever, you know, I had cancer in 86, too. So a whole bunch of stuff went on in 86. But it was like a warning, you know, come to class, learn all you can because you're going to need it. Because y'all know from then up until now, we definitely need to keep our finger in the book. Because you hear so many things where people are going off and giving you their concept of what their their understanding of what the Bible is saying, and I don't want to do that. I want to read what does say Yahweh, and we, are, uh, we can see what he has to say about it. Okay, so now, where am I at now? Uh, is it Deuteronomy 13, 6 I to 11? Need, I don't need words on my screen. I need to see the, uh, the vision. If you don't mind, please. I greatly appreciate it. And then I'll be, I promise you, I'm almost done. I promise you, I'm almost done. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, I'm just trying to... Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Go ahead. 13, 6. If thy okay. brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, Let mm -hmm. us go and serve other Elohim, which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers, namely of the idols of the people which are around you nigh unto thee, or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him, neither shall thine eye pity him, neither shall thou spare, neither shall thou conceal him, but thou mm -hmm. shalt surely kill him. Thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterwards the hand of all the people. And thou shalt stone him with stones that he died, because he sought to mislead thee away from Yahweh thy Elohim, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And all Israel shall hear and fear, and shall do no more any such wickedness as this is among you. Now, ain't that something? Back then, you got killed for not doing what thus say Yahweh, uh, going through the apostasy. And you know all the things, but, you know, and then let me say this, show that. So even though we see these people that have turned their back on, on the vision of what Yahweh has presented to us through Dr. Kenley, even though they have turned their back, they are spiritually dead. So just like back here, how they had to kill him, Yahweh has done that so spiritually so because he said that because they didn't love the truth, that he would turn them over to a reprobate mind, which is an unprincipled person. And what we do, we teach by precepts and principles and a tabernacle pattern that we're going by. So they're doing the total opposite. They're saying it's a man. So you see the difference in, in, in man's wisdom and sticking to what thus say Yahweh according to the divine vision that we were given. Now that's Deuteronomy. Now let's go over in Chronicles uh, 15 and 13. I'm First trying to Chronicles. Get second 15. Chronicles. For me? This is you second. call second Chronicles 15 13? Yes, ma'am. Okay. First second Chronicles 15 13. That whosoever would not seek Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel, should be put to death. 
whether small or great, whether man or woman. Mm -hmm. And they swear unto Yahweh with a loud voice and with shouting and with trumpets and with cornets. Mm -hmm. and, all, and all Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire. And he was, he was found of them, and Yahweh gave them rest round about. As long as they are obedient. And so that's what we want to do, continue to be obedient. But I wanted to pick up some apostasy. Those are not the witnesses that I really want to get the apostasy. But you understand that if they didn't do what thus say Yahweh, they were in an apostasy because apostasy is going against or rebelling against what thus say Yahweh. Uh, conclusion, um, let's get... Um, we did, did we do we did we finish reading second Peter 2 20 through 22? Did we read all of that? I'm not sure, but you so. did call Exodus 23 and 20. 20, yes. Oh, yes, yes, definitely. Because it letting you know that you read it. 20 Exodus, Exodus 20, 20 through 23. Exodus, Exodus 23 and 20. Yes. Behold, I send an angel before thee to mm -hmm. keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place where I have prepared. Mm -hmm. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. Mm -hmm. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice mm -hmm. and do all that I speak, mm -hmm. then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies, and an adversary unto thine adversaries. So that is still a true today that Yahweh has sent an angel before us to keep us in the way. That's why we have these classes. That's why we, you know, we have these different platforms where Yahweh is sitting up. And I'm telling you, you know, Yahweh, it's Satan doing it. What we have got to come to a realization. If you have the uh, Aya Asha Aya chart, you can show that. What we have come had to come to really that Yahweh, which is pure spirit, and what he has is um, is two mysteries, is two manifestations. You know, we always talk about the manifestations of Yahweh, how we show Yahweh on the Moses chart being in pure spirit, and then Yahweh Elohim as Yahweh Elohim, you know, showing how he is uh, in that super incorporeal form. And then we show how he was down in the flesh as Yahshua sight. So those are his two manifestations of, of being uh, Yahweh Elohim in uh, super incorporeal form and in corporal form as Yahshua, see? But see, no, I don't know what that is. Please remove that from the screen, if you don't mind. Uh, it's an Aya Asha Aya chart. Have mercy. Mm -hmm. um, uh, do I have anything holding? And I want to get over in Galatians because I wanted to share with you. I just wanted to show you how that bad boy is. So see the perilous times, see men are lovers of their own self, you mean, whatever it says. But then it also says, uh, be assured of, of what you have learned. So I'm just trying to go over some of the things that we've learned to keep us uh, focused on uh, of the difference between that mystery of iniquity and that mystery of righteousness, you know, but they both have their M.O. Yahshua is love, peace, and joy, and Satan, he's got that envy and murder and strife, and we'll try to pick up that. Excuse I don't understand. Me. Excuse why. me, the I, I, Asher, I chart does not have these two on it? No, 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 no sir. Whatever that does is, have, I don't What does it have on it? Okay, okay. Uh, just give me the, back to the uh, tabernacle. No, what does it have on it is my question. Aya Asha Aya chart. It has Aya Asha Aya. It has the vision and it shows Yahshua and it shows Satan. Right. And sure. it shows Moses in the middle. The vision or the delusion. Right, thank you. The two mysteries. Right. Keep going down, Dennis. Keep going down. Oh. Okay. Because I saw you pass it twice. Okay. Jackie, did you want Galatians? Right there. Right there. Go back. Probably right there. So. Yeah, that one. Thank Probably. you. Yeah. Okay. Probably so. Five and nineteen. Go ahead, the baby. The flesh. 
Yeah, Nancy, that was talking. So I'm just 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 wanted to share some of Satan's mo because you know we understand the apostasy is turning against or dis disannulling. So we ought to know what Yahweh is teaching versus what Satan is teaching. If I'm making myself, if it's making any sense, I'm hoping I'm making sense. Mm -hmm. Read on. Go ahead. Galatians five and nineteen. Mm -hmm. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these: mm -hmm. adultery fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresy, envying, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. All right. So we're going to see. Right. So mm -hmm. you see the chart that we have up here now. You, the, this is the Aya Asha Aya chart. Remember, I told you how Yahweh is pure spirit. Yahweh, if you can, okay, if you can take your mind and say that Yahweh is everything and we're all encompassed within him. And within him, there are two mysteries. And those two mysteries are operating in bodies and some are not. Because remember, we read about principalities and power because they're, they're, they're innumerable. You can't even name them. And, and then I remember uh, I've heard uh, testimony of people say, doctors to say that it's a whole bunch of angels. Wherever we, the sons are gathered, the angels are gathered with us. So they're with us here, you know, but we, you know, they're invisible, that their, their spirit is present. Okay, I'm going to leave that one alone. Okay, so the vision, as you see on this chart, you see life, 888. That eight is eternity. You know, you put that eight on the side that like that sign of infinity because Yahweh is life, see? And uh, uh, then you have over here, you got the vision in the middle, see? And that vision, you can either have a revelation or you can have a delusion. And, you know, Yahweh said he's the one that's doing the choosing, you know? So we know that coming in here and learning of him, he's casting out that, that old concept that we had and see we get, we're getting rid of it and, and every day we're killing he said every day that old man is killing because i know i got a lot of junk that still needs to be killed too and that's why i come to class because i know i need help i ain't never too big to think that i know everything you can never know everything about it. he's just too great you know that's what we sang about today he's just too great to find out so he's everything so he's life and he's death. Let's get over there in Deuteronomy. Is it uh, uh, 32, 39, where he wound and he kill? I, Yahweh, do all these things. 32, 39. Deuteronomy. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Silence. Uh, Yes, that is Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 32. 32, 39. If I was, I was in Exodus, duh. Uh -huh. Deuteronomy, <laughs> Deuteronomy 32 and 39. 32, 39. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, Deuteronomy 32, 39. See now that, see now that I, even I am he, and there is none with me. I kill and I make a lie. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. You hear that? Now that's the kind of creator we serve. That's the kind of creator we're worshiping and we're learning about and we want to tell the world. That's why we got these platforms set up so somebody can hear what he's saying. And it might seem like, oh, now everybody say they have the truth. I know, I know what it sounds like, but this is it right here. This is the truth direct from the creator himself. If your mind can wrap around that coming direct from the creator himself. So you see how he said, I wound, I kill. He said, I make a lie. See, and he said, ain't nobody going to remove from me. So Yahweh said he's kept all that the father has given me. So we don't, don't worry about whether you got something or not. Just come to class and learn and be happy to want to share what Yahweh has given you to somebody else so they can be 
so they can see the same thing. Okay, so I'm, I got that. So we understand that the two mysteries are in operation in this earth plane. Those are the prince and the, the principalities and the powers in high places, okay? So now uh, she just read Galatians, which she was telling you about the works of that flesh. And on this chart, you can see here, he's the accuser of the brethren. He's the beast man of sin. He's a liar. He's the man of sin. He's a murderer. He's murdering you when he tells you, oh, you can call him what you want. That's murdering you, you know, and then the, the world, you know, they want to keep a 10 commandments. And I tell them, look at the seventh commandment, you know, thou shalt not take away the name of Yahweh, thy Elohim, where you took away the name and put the Lord God. So you broke the commandment already. See, we can't keep no physical law. It's Okay, I'm getting going down the rabbit hole. I apologize. So now uh, we read Galatians. We read Second Peter. If we didn't, we need to read it because we get, we're escaping the pollution of the world by the preaching of the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. And yeah, because we did, because we see how the latter end was worse than the first. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So uh, I think I'm through. Uh, first Timothy. I got First Timothy four, but I don't know why I have it there. Uh, Cause the third chapter is where we was reading in, but uh, uh, Yahweh has turned my uh, mouth off, and uh, nothing I is piping. You, I think you probably wanted uh, First Timothy four and one. Is this it? Uh, for First Timothy four and one. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that mm -hmm. in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving mm -hmm. heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons, mm -hmm. speaking lies and hypocrisy, having mm -hmm. their conscience seared with a hot iron, mm -hmm. forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which Yahweh have created to be received with thanksgiving of mm -hmm. them which believe and know the truth. I believe that's what you wanted, Doc. Okay. All righty. For that every was in line. That was in line with Second Peter, but I the, really what I really want to say is uh, how uh, we are in these last days and we're in these perilous times. And mm. like uh, 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 what the vessels were saying before, we gotta prove all things. And uh, just because a person say something doesn't necessarily mean it's true. You go back and, and check out what they said and make sure what they said, because that's what we had to do when we first came in the class. You know, we was taught to go to Luke 24 and 25. And then it began at Moses because Moses, Yahweh gave the vision to and showed him everything. And from there on, you know, Moses is uh, setting up or Yahweh set it up and showed us through that and through the prophet. So he said, he comes through the light. He said, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. So Yahshua came in to, do, to fulfill everything that was written in the law and the prophets. But see, the world still think that they have to keep a law, just like when we read over in Acts, they thought they had to still keep a law. But Yahweh, the keep coming to class and he'll slowly keep chipping that away. I don't can, I don't know if you have the brain chart, Dennis, you'll see how he's slowly chipping away all that carnality from us. And then he's clothing us in his son because that's what we want to be. We want to be clothed in the son. And the only way we can be clothed in the son is to come down here and learn what does say Yahweh and see how he said it according to the scriptures. I hope somebody received something from I said, that's just what Yahweh gave me to say this morning. All praises, all glory to Yahshua. Everything I said is because me coming to this school and learning about my creator as he really is and actually exists. And his name is Yahweh. He manifested as Elohim and in the flesh as Yahshua the Messiah. And in John 14 and 26, he said, the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, is going to come in my name. Now, that's Yahshua talking, whom you call Jesus Christ. Ain't no such animal as Jesus Christ. You got to get over that real quick. And then one way to get over it, when the letter J was on the planet, there was uh, when when Yahshua, sorry, when Yahshua came through the loins of the virgin and the angel named him before he came through the loins of the virgin, there was no J on the planet. You cannot substitute what was. And that blood 
That's the blood that he shed for the remission of sin. That blood came in a name, and that only name is Yahshua. Jesus didn't shed no blood. I'm sorry. I don't care how sweet it sound and how good it might be, but it ain't nothing. It's death. And Yahshua told us in John 5 and 43, let another come in his own name. Him ye will receive. How can you receive honor, which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from who? Yahweh Elohim only. See, we said, yeah, yeah. This, this gospel is beautiful. Keep coming to class. Keep asking Yahweh to keep showing you because he will. All you got to do is ask him. He said, you receive not because you ask not. Just keep asking and keep, uh, keep coming and keep loving the brethren. Praise Yahshua. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. 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 I have a hand up, Dr. Jean Burris. Uh, yes. Um, I'm curious about the chart that uh, you pulled up when Jackie asked him for the Iyer Ash Iyer chart. Uh, somehow in my directed personality chart. Ego to yeah that one. Is that the one Dr. Burris? Uh, yes. yes. Um somehow I can understand that those two charts pretty much uh, share the same vision. Um, yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that chart, Dr. Pratt? I've never seen it, but I see the difference between spirituality and carnality. Okay. I Three, first saw that three, chart three, in the three, Ontario three. class. Exactly. Dr. Joe uh, Williams at the time and the class um, is where this chart is housed. And it does it does point to what we see on the Aya Asha Aya chart. So it points to the principles according to the pattern of how Yahweh is operating as Elohim and as Yahshua and giving us the proof, the precepts, and the truth in this manifestation through his manifestation as the Messiah. And then through his resurrection, he's resurrecting our hearts and minds unto eternal life, an incorruptible state of understanding the precepts, you know, and to a manner of living, you know, from, 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 from a state, you know, that uh, su such as mortality, which is a state that comes to an end. And then further, it ascends us upon the universal revelation of Yahshua Messiah, which is taking place now into a spiritual mind, into one that's immutable and that's righteous. And it follows the pattern of the most holy place, holy place, and court roundabout. And we see the contrast when we see, when one talks of the science of mind and how they pursue carnal practices, you know, carnal holidays, especially because I'm finding just about every month has a lot more holidays than I remember years ago. <laughs> so these holidays are carnal in nature, you know, and, and it's changing and, and misdirecting the mind into practicing, you know, or thinking one is justified through their practice of morals or morality. Um, so we see the contrast in this compartment, you know, that follows these uh, precepts you know, that's corruptible, that comes to an end through mortality, that's temporal. We see the theories through academia, as I mentioned before, the concepts, you know, and the opinions, many, many opinions, but no proof, you know. So we see that here and it, and it leads, you know, it's just, um, it leads us to just rely <clears throat> on the carnal sight through, you know, sound, taste, and smell instead of understanding the spiritual discernment through the aims that we have learned since being in class where he manifests himself, you know, into our ears, into our tongue, you know, and understand that all of that follows this operation of this pattern. Once onto eternal glorification, 
one is unto eternal damnation. I hope that helps. Well, I thank you for that because uh, it pretty much verifies what I saw, although it was brief, mm -hmm. and it sometimes takes a moment for me to pull things together. But uh, I appreciate you. I appreciate your time. Thank Great you. Joshua. Dr. Baker's hand is up. I just wanted to add one more thing to Dr. Burris. And we see over here, law of the spirit versus the science of the mind. So if you go spirituality, when you're in the spirit, law of the spirit is spirituality. And once we have our changed mind, we come from a carnal mind to a spiritual mind. We come from our minds being changed to an immutable mind. We come from the mind of a person with morals to a righteous mind. Uh, the law of the spirit, which is these three, are in the holy place. Where in the law of the spirit is eternal. And the science of the mind is temporal. And the law of the spirit, incorruptible. Science of the mind, corruptible. See, this is how Yahweh's changing us from a carnal mind to a spiritual mind. And then you have down here in the court roundabout, you got proof, you got the theories, you got the precepts, the spiritual law of the spirit, you got concepts in the science of the mind, and truth, which is in the carnal mind, we have opinions. So it's the spiritual, showing forth the spiritual versus the carnal. And it's all going according to the pattern, the most holy place, holy place, and the court round the down. That's all I wanted to point out. Praise Joshua. Uh, may, may I also add concerning this particular chart, when the founder had the vision, he said that Yahweh spoke to that part of him that was made in his likeness and his image because there was nothing that he could do with that egotistical, misdirected personality. Right. Praise Joshua. Thanks, Amen. everybody. Hallelujah. Beautiful. Hallelujah. Question. Yes, so uh, is that the name of the chart? The egotistical misdirected personality? Is that the name of that chart? I believe it is. Unless yes. I yes, it is. Yes, ma'am. I think it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other comments or questions before we move in? <laughs> One more thing, Dr. Uh, Pratt. Um, yes. Excuse me. When Dr. Uh, McCain was asking for the brain chart, that's her emblem on her uh, name here. That's yes. the brain chart, if you don't have Yeah, I'm familiar with it, but I don't think I have it in the place, but I'll do what I can to retrieve it. Yes, that's the brain chart. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we are in God, the archetype. Original Pattern of the Universe, published in 1961. On yesterday, we started the basic philosophical and scientific preparation that our founder, Dr. Kenley, wrote in, in, in guiding us in an understanding of divine revelations and the panoramic vision that he received and how it revolutionizes, revolutionizes the teaching you know, that we thought and was once under regarding psychology, philosophy, science, and religion. And he revolutionizes this teaching by showing us and proving to us a divine pattern that's in everyone's scripture and a plan on how it operates to this present day. And in having a profound knowledge of Yahweh, beginning with his name and his divine title and knowing the name of the Messiah, which is the only name given to man whereby man must be saved, you know, it brings us to a, a presence and an understanding, an ever, an ever, ever eternal presence with him um, throughout, you know, the ages to come. 
So he gives us guidance here in, in understanding that there are steps that he's laid out uh, where he can take us step by step, um, as he states here, step by step into a, an understanding of him. And so we went through the first step, which we must realize that we use the word God is spirit, but we know God is an inappropriate title that was used to substitute the divine title of Elohim. And that Elohim is Yahweh, which is spirit, not a spirit. So we covered that in part one of, of our class yesterday regarding this uh, section, basic philosophical and scientific preparation. We are now going to continue on page four with number two, I believe, and I will yield the floor to the scripture readers. Number two, we must also realize the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and, and Godhead so that they are without excuse, Romans 1 and 20. We it's must all get there. Yeah, we must, yes. We must also realize. Number three, that, number three, we must also realize. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I, I, I couldn't see it on my screen. <laughs> number three, we must also realize that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, which is already quoted. Right. And unless there are any questions or comments on these two steps, we're very familiar with Romans 1, 19 and 20 for those who've been in class to know that it, it guides us in understanding the invisible things of Yahweh by looking at the creation that he has made by the pattern that's also stated in the moderation and shown on the Moses chart or the chart entitled Elohim, the archetype original pattern of the universe. And in step three, we must also realize that all scripture, which we read in 2 Timothy, third chapter, is given by the inspiration of God, which we know as Elohim. And that scripture, it refers to the, what we know as the Old Testament, which involves the books of Moses and then the prophets and Psalms that we see in the Old Testament. That is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of Elohim may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works, just as a tabernacle was thoroughly furnished and correlates to the furnishings in our physical body. So we see how he feeds us, how the blood nourishes us. We see how in our most holy place that the head cavity is nourished through this word that we are we are we assemble for because this is a feast as some people have referred to it as but this is a communion with our savior and 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 he leads us in the truth and in understanding and that's in second timothy the third chapter as we read verses 16 through 17. so we can continue reading beginning with it cannot be reiterated oh Dr. When, we're in the uh, Volume one, what page? I'm sorry, I was here yesterday. Okay, so this is in the old, this is in God the Archetype, original pattern of the universe, published in 1961. So it's on page four. It doesn't indicate a volume on the bottom of the oh. page. Okay, right? so it's the old, it's the first printing. Yes, it is, ma'am. Okay, I don't have that. Okay, so. Okay, it's page four. And it's on, the, I think, page five, Dr. Burris, in the new, the new book, the newest okay. edition. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it would be actually on page six in volume one. Um, I'm looking at the uh, Elohim, the archetype original pattern of the universe, 
So yeah, it, there there's more steps written out in the 1969 publication, but Joshua led me to look at the first publication, which has three steps that Dr. Kennedy listed out, which makes it plain and easily to run with. And that's understanding well, Romans 1, 19 and 20 and understanding that all scripture is by inspiration. On the screen, um, it's divided some type of way. Oh, on my screen anyway. And I, okay, now I pulled it together. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Praise Joshua. Yes, it's written in columns. Yes. Dr. Altman, would you continue, please? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. It cannot be reiterated too strongly how vitally important it is for you, the reader, and me, the writer, to realize and know that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God, 2 Timothy 3.16. It is also important that we thoroughly understand the meaning of the inspiration of God, or all scripture was written by the power of God to manifest himself, the creation and his purpose through visions and revelations. Moses and the prophet told what they saw and heard God say in their visions by means of writing. These writings are called the scriptures, John 5.39. These visions reveal God in the realm of eternity and manifest his activities in the past, present, and future. They disclose the entire purpose of God from Alpha to Omega. Also, bear in mind and remember <clears throat> excuse me, that we must know the difference between one age and the other the difference between one dispensation and the other, the following definitions of an age and dispensation were taken from a Webster's Dictionary. Age, a particular period or time of history as distinguished from another, a historical epoch. Dispensation, the divine ordering of the affairs of the world, an appointment or arrangement as by God, a divinely appointed order or system. An example, the ages are in the following order, the creative, the antediluvian, the postdiluvian, the present, he has church, the kingdom, the perfect, and the sabbatical, ages to come. Okay, we can pause there and open the floor for any comments or questions on what was just read. We covered 2 Timothy 3 and 16, and as Dr. Kennedy says, it's through a divine vision revelation that these words that's known as the scriptures was given to Moses and the prophets. And that's in John 5, 39. We can get that because it wasn't quoted, but we can read John 5 and 39 again. John 5, 39. Ye search the scriptures, for in them ye think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. So that dissolves the idea that the Bible is talking about me or anyone that opens a Bible and looking for something to talk, you know, something that may say something about them. It's about Yahshua the Messiah. It's about the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. who is the creator of all creation and the scriptures, as it says here in John 5, 39, is witnessing their witnesses. You have the law and the prophet. There are two witnesses, the law, the first five books. And then you have the testimonies of the prophet from, from Joshua to Malachi, the 34 books. And there are his two witnesses today that witness to the events that have transpired in this present kingdom age. There's a hand up by Dr. McCain and one other. 
Yes, sir. I, when, uh, since this is being recorded and we don't never know who might look, when Dr. Kenley is speaking of the scriptures here and he gets five, John 5 and 39, we have to understand that what he's talking about as far as scriptures are the law and the prophets from Genesis to Malachi with uh, the first five books being the law and the last 34 being the prophets. Showing that's what the scriptures are because Matthew through Revelation had not been written at the time he spoke that. I just wanted to bring that out for uh, the broadcast for new people that don't know. Right, Joshua. We had another hand. Yes. Dr. Latoya Braggs has put up a link for the um, for the textbook for God the Archetype Pattern. Yes, I wanted to ask, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, is there a difference in the wiki pattern of everything um, and the copy or this version that you have on the screen? I don't know. I'm looking at this version and also the which is from a hard copy as well that some ministers have showed me. So this shows a simpler step from one to three. Whereas the publication in 1969 has steps that will take you, I believe there are about 14 steps as listed in that publication. So that's one of the differences between the first publication and the second where it's further drawn out in the second publication. Which is the one from the website? Uh, well, you can get this also on the website, Elohim, oh. the Archetype Original Pen of the Universe, which okay. is a second publication. All right. Thank you. It's yeah. just hard for me to um stay focused when the when the two columns, so I have to um go to the to the reading and put it under re read mode where it's more in paragraph form versus two columns. But thank you. I just want to know was there any difference? Okay. Thank you for your comment. Okay. I had a comment. Mm -hmm. Dr. Sybil Lewis? Yes. Uh, I noticed <clears throat> you said this is the 1969, the old, the first textbook? No. I should what be 1961. The it's the 1961. Okay. I noticed um, there on the page that uh, the dispensations, I was looking at that. And I don't know if everybody knows this, that the first one is listed as the Edenic. Uh, we haven't gone there yet. We haven't read that. Okay, yet. okay, all We're right. We've just read about the ages. Is there okay. Any questions on the ages. All right, well, I'll save my comment. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we have it on the screen to follow. I would encourage you to look at the screen instead of trying to compare it with the second publication because that would generate, that may generate some confusion for you. The purpose of showing the first publication is just as we are always instructed with King James and Holy Name, mm -hmm. is to consider the two translations or the two versions or have two or more witnesses to look at. So I would encourage you, anyone that's having some problems, which I saw a note in the chat to focus on the first publication that we have here in this format that's laid out. Because I'll, I'll share one of the things that the world knows they've been concealing the, to the best of their ability, this first publication. And those that have a hard copy are trying to sell it for over two or three thousand dollars. And I've seen that on the website. And there are some monasteries that have it, but you won't. It would be difficult to find or even have any library to pull it. So it has value. And so with the opportunity of seeing it on the screen now, it's, it's the opportunity that Yashua has led me to for us to review it for especially the first time and returning visitors. So we have the seven ages, which, which is known as a period of time that Yahweh has laid out. And that this chart where it points to the seven ages, We'll pull it out. 
you'll see here the creative age. The second age is the antediluvian age. So you see almost like a frame, just like you see a, a window, the curtain, this has a frame. So the first age open and close. And then we see the second age open and close. The third age opened and closed. The fourth age opened and closed. And then you have the fifth, sixth, and seventh ages to come that we saw in the text listed. Is that the bell? Okay. Listed as the present age, which is where we are. And we are his church. He doesn't worship in buildings made with, with uh, hands, but he himself abides with us, within us, as it was stated in previous classes, that, you know, know ye not that we are the temple of the living Elohim. And so we have in this present age, this age open with Pentecost, which are outpouring of the Holy Spirit that has taken place. And that this fifth age is an age of immortality. And we are uh, waiting for that promised redemption that we see that takes place in this fifth age, the kingdom age, which is an age of immortality. And this will take place upon the universal revelation of Yahshua the Messiah. I believe someone has a comment or a hand up. I'm not sure. Uh, Dr. Lucy Altman. Uh, yeah, I put in chat, I'm sorry, I read through those ages, but I did not uh, read the numbers, the one through seven. Also, I'm also wondering about the spelling of the word Sabathnico. Is anybody familiar with that? Yes, I researched. It's a correct spelling. It's a conjugation, as was mentioned in previous classes, of the word Sabbath. So this is not a grammatical error here, but this is a true conjugation of this state, which is the seventh state, which points to the Sabbath or that rest. Um, so we'll see, uh, you know, as we continue reading how the perfect involves, in, you know, everything intact, you know, and, and, and so we'll see that in the kingdom where the mortality will be consumed and we become, we are given immortal bodies, you know, in learning of, in ages to come of our Savior. Um, you know, putting all things under his feet and then bringing us into a rest where we will uh, we will know and better understand the previous ages and the dispensations in it. Okay, so that was the bell. We are at 1257. Um, I think this will be a good place to stop before we get into uh, the dispensations maybe. Oh, no, let's go ahead and let's read this top paragraph since we just mentioned the word Sabbath. And that was brought up by Dr. Altman. Let's read that paragraph, please. The Sabbath is the day of God, the seventh day or the day before the eighth or the beginning of another series of ages. It is necessary to mention here that God is eternal. It is also necessary that you do as the Apostle Paul advised Timothy, study the scriptures to show himself approved of God, writing, rightly dividing the dispensations and ages or the word of truth, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. 2 Timothy 2.15 Learn to correctly divide the dispensations. An example. The dispensations are in the following order. All right, we can stop there. We can mm -hmm. stop that first paragraph. So we'll reread this again tomorrow, Yahweh willing. And it was quoted in 2 Timothy 2 and 15 that uh, we are instructed and encouraged to study, to take the time out, as Dr. Kimmy said in the earlier um, in the earlier readings, to clear your mind, be in a place where you're not disturbed you know, turn off your phone and, and, and open the book and read and, 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 and meditate because it is a wonderful thing to see Yahshua just, just give, give an aha moment, you know, to something maybe that's been looked at time and time again and then seeing it just come off the page and, and taking on a higher state. Uh, it's, it's beautiful. So I definitely want to encourage everyone to do that. And we will uh, meet again tomorrow.
The platform will be open at 10.30 a.m., Yahweh willing. And with that, I pray, I pray that someone was able to be increased today through the, the, the um, discussion and the discourse of the previous speakers and what we have read thus far. Please take the time to review the ages and to get a better understanding of the word anti and not anti and to understand what the Luvian means and, and, and have a better understanding of some of the terms that have been shared. With that, all praise to Yahshua the Messiah. I yield the floor to the moderator. Thank you, Dr. Pratt. And thank you everyone for, for their participation today. This week, we will continue classes on the archetype pattern workshop at Fairmont West Virginia's platform to support the absence of the Honest Heart of Truth Seekers Zoom class. May we ask all attending this class to please identify themselves on their devices with their name and location for proper attendance record. May we all stand in our hearts and minds before we do our doxology. We want to announce that we hold classes Tuesday through Friday, 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. May we all stand in our hearts and minds for our doxology taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude in the Holy Name Bible. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever, let us all say, Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.